I'm going to demonstrate how to achieve several different textures of stucco and plaster using this one product. It's a water-based wood filler made by Elmer's called Carpenter's Wood Filler. And it's very important that it's the interior version, not the exterior. The exterior has a gritty additive that makes it hard to smooth and to trowel. And when it's dry, it's also harder to sand than this version of it. When you first open it, you'll see it's quite thick, but like peanut butter. So we're going to want to thin it down a little bit at a time until it's about the consistency of a medium to thin pancake batter or like melted ice cream. These walls are a quarter inch MDF and they're quite smooth. If you're working on a plywood that has a grain, you may need to fill it, uh, do a preliminary filling with that full consistency Elmer's and a palette knife to get rid of any grain you have and let it dry, sand it before you go on to, to the uh, finish, the clear finish that's on this. This is uh, polyacrylic. It doesn't have to be Minwax brand, but it needs to be a water-based polyacrylic. Better if it's a satin, it will have a, a texture that will have better adhesion with the filler. Once your polyacrylic's dry and you have your walls ready to, get, to go, you'll want to assemble all, all the tools you'll need. You'll want a sponge brush, uh, depending upon the size of the wall. You might need a, an even wider one if you're doing a large wall, or you might want to have a small roller like this. The only thing about these rollers is they have a tendency to push up a ridge because of this square edge, so you may have to come back with a smaller sponge and even out those areas. Um, all of these have been wet with water. Dip it in water and then use a paper towel to wring out all the excess. You only want it slightly damp. For a finer texture, you can use like an automotive sponge or a tile setter sponge, those large yellow sponges, and cut a piece off of that. Uh, a coarser texture like a kitchen regular cellulose sponge works well for like a Spanish style uh, stucco. And uh, you might cut different sizes depending if you have to get into small corners or edges and details, so that's something else to do. If you're doing a quarter scale uh, stucco, you can use a cosmetic wedge. Um, it has a very fine texture and you'll, the scale of the texture will, will be more appropriate for quarter scale. What you want to do is apply about a sixteenth of an inch thick layer of this filler. It's a little bit thicker some places and, and thinner others, that's okay. What's important is that there are no bare spots. You don't want to see any what I call bald spots, so make sure that it's covered all the way there. Don't worry too much about that edge going around, you can come back later. Let's just do, oh, that's good. That's never happened to you before, has it? Let's just do an area about like that. As you work with it, depending upon your room conditions, if it's drier and warmer, you're going to want to work a smaller area. If you have good conditions like I have today, you'll be able to do a, a larger area all at once. Take your sponge and tap up and down. This is going to raise little um, peaks in it. That's all you're going to do. Then you can work, go on to the next area overlapping slightly. And as you're using that sponge, you're, you're, it's going to pick up the filler and you, you can transfer from one area to another if it's too heavy in one area. 
then you can it'll even out as you go along. Of course, the coarser and heavier texture, you want it a little bit thicker, and you'll want to leave some inconsistencies if you're going for a smoother, more even. You might want to stay with the uh, finer textured sponge and do it do a uh, thinner coat. And this is what the texture you've got. So you're going to set this aside until it dulls down as it partially dries. And that's kind of an indicator of when you can trowel it. Um, the only way of knowing for sure of that is just experimentation, doing tests depending upon your room conditions and you getting a feel for the way it looks when it's ready to trowel. This is going to be very hard to see on camera, but it's dulled down. It's not as wet and glossy when it first applied, and that's only been about 10 minutes. And so I'm going to uh, trowel an area. The outer edges will dry first. They're exposed to the air along the edge, just like a, a, a skin. So you'll want to start on the edges and work to the center, and that will be the area that, that dries the last. You can use either a palette knife like this, or a plastic key card. You want to have a paper towel to wipe the edge of your knife or card on as you work along so you don't transfer any excess to other areas. Keep it almost flat to the surface and just lightly drag it across very lightly. You can come back and do more. The more you do, the smoother it's going to be. So you can see I'm barely dragging across. Randomly. Just don't... There are certain styles you might find like in uh, some of the Spanish Colonial Revival, California Plath. There's a very definite pattern and all in one direction. But generally speaking, for most applications, you want to try and keep it random. Can you see that this area I'm working here is a little too wet still? So just work from the outside in. And if it feels like it's not, you're not getting, like it's just sticking too much to the knife and it's not troweling, well, at first, then let's let it go a little longer. It's not the kind of thing you can set down and come back to. You have to mo monitor it as you, as you work along. I'm going to let that go a little bit. Let's see how our small sample piece is. The smaller the piece is, the faster it's going to dry. This has a little different texture. I used the finer sponge on this one. It's quite cool today. And and humid, so it's probably going to take a little longer than average to dry. So I'm going to let these rest a second. I came back in like five minute intervals and checked, did other things in my workshop and came back and and finished the area on this larger wall. It took a little longer. This one, because it's smaller, took less time. And you can see it's got a smoother texture because of the smoother sponge. I also troweled it a little bit more than this. These little crumbs that are loose of filler, don't worry about them. When it's totally dry, as you sand, they'll be knocked off, and you, you can vary the amount of texture you leave with the sanding also. So this is not the finished texture. So this is, you're not trying for perfection, because you still have sanding to go. And it's also additive. You can always come back once it's totally dry, and add a little filler where you need it, and come back and retexture.